there was this dude named Edward, who was shooting brutal and yet funny pranks. People of all ages all across Roblox watched his shorts, and his videos always got a lot of likes and views. But once, this kid decided to shoot the craziest video he possibly could, and he chose a girl, Stacy, to be his victim of the new prank. Edward's shorts caught the attention of even the cops. It was clear that this time the guy had crossed all the limits and, along with this, broke the law. The police officer swiftly apprehended the troubled blogger red-handed and whisked him away to the police station. Edward spent several hours behind bars but he was released after his parents arrived. But not just for beautiful eyes. His stepfather, Sam, had to pay a hefty fine. Following this incident, Edward's stepfather grew even more resentful towards him. As a punishment, he decided to send his stepson to the countryside to stay with his grandparents. Edward was terribly unhappy, but he had no other choice. The journey to the countryside was long and boring. Edward decided to watch more shorts, but to his horror he discovered that there was no cell phone signal. It was such a remote area. Edward couldn't imagine how anyone could live without the internet, or how would he share his pranks now? Lost in his thoughts, the car finally reached the destination. Edward got out but no one bothered to say anything to him. Wishing his parents well, he started walking towards the house. Edward knocked on the door, but it was already open. He stepped inside. The atmosphere in the house was creepy and uncomfortable. It seemed that nobody had lived there for a long, long time. Glancing around, Edward began calling for his grandmother and his grandfather, but no one responded. The encounter with his grandmother was rather unexpected. Edward greeted her, but the old lady paid zero attention to him. She was busy popping some pills. When he looked at the bottle in her hand, everything became clear to him. His grandma was under the influence of tranquilizers. In a moment, a brilliant idea came to the boy's mind. Since the old lady was completely oblivious, she became the perfect target for the prankster's new videos. Taking full advantage of the situation, Edward decided to capture the shorts related shenanigans on camera. All in all, the boy got quite satisfied about his first day in the countryside. Night fell. Before going to bed, Edward went to the bathroom. The toilet was very old and dirty. The prankster kicked it, calling it a stinky, and then relieved himself. Having done the job, he went to sleep. Suddenly, some strange gargling resounded from the toilet. Edward decided to see what was happening. He entered the bathroom and saw some weird, unexplainable phenomenon happening to the toilet. Not wanting to miss a cool shot, the blogger grabbed his smartphone and started recording. Suddenly, the head of a horrifying zombie emerged from the toilet. Overwhelmed by fear, Edward dropped his smartphone in panic and ran away. The toilet monster chased right after him. Terrified, the young man hid under the bed. He couldn't believe the reality of what was happening. That was literally a living nightmare. The toilet monster found its prey in no time, and Edward raced downstairs, trying to escape the danger. Down there, another idea came to his mind. Now he decided to lure the monster into a trap. The boy sprinted towards the entrance of the cellar and started waving his arms, catching the monster's attention. Enraged, the monster leaped towards him and fell into the trap. Edward swiftly closed the cellar lid and blocked the exit as best as he could. The monster struggled to break free, emitting horrifying sounds. Frightened, Edward rushed into his grandmother's room. He tried to wake her up, but she was taking medication, so she was in a deep sleep. Meanwhile, the toilet continued its attempts to escape. 
Edward, huddled in the farthest corner of the room, listening to the eerie thoughts of the monster. He remained there for quite a long time, until eventually falling asleep without even realizing it. Then, the morning came. The first one to wake up was the grandmother. She didn't even get out of bed and already reached for her pills. Shortly after, Edward woke up as well. In panic, he started telling her about the horrifying events of the previous night, but his grandma didn't care. He really freaked the boy out. In defiance of his grandmother and to prove his story, he decided to release the monster from captivity. Afraid that the hellish toilet would attack him, he opened the hatch and leaped away in terror. Trembling with fear, he awaited the appearance of the monster, but nothing happened. Edward cautiously peered into the cellar, only to be surprised by its emptiness. There was no one there. Meanwhile, his grandma sat innocently in front of the TV, watching cartoons from her childhood. The guy rushed upstairs to the second floor. There in a fit of rage, he barged into the bathroom and saw that the toilet was in the exact same spot. Edward lost it. In response, a gargling sound echoed through the room, as if the toilet was trolling him. Without the internet at home, life was getting dull. Edward decided to take a stroll around the village. The residents of the neighboring houses cast suspicious glances at the unfamiliar passers-by. They clearly weren't pleased to see him. Edward also noticed that each house had a sign with a crossed-out monster toilet. It gave him something to think about. Continuing his walk, the young man arrived at the local gas station. Inside the building, there was an old telephone booth. Edward was thrilled by the sight. Now he could finally call his parents. He inserted a coin and began dialing his mom's number, which he knew by heart. At that moment, Edward's parents were sitting at the cafe. Seeing an incoming call from an unfamiliar number seemed weird, so it was his stepfather who picked up the phone. Edward started begging his stepfather to bring him back home, explaining that a horrifying toilet monster was there at his grandmother's house. His stepdad assumed that it was just another reckless prank, so he simply hung up the phone. The young man just kept talking and talking, but when he heard the dial tone, he flew into rage and started vandalizing the old phone. He was on the verge of tears when he heard someone calling him from the gas station. An elderly worker waved for him to come closer and began telling the story of the prankster's curse. It turned out that Edward's grandfather, Bill, had been constantly pulling pranks on the villagers. Once, he sneaked into a field with cows and painted them all red. On another occasion, he tampered with the brakes of a local tractor, causing the tractor driver to crash into a cell phone tower. Since then, the entire village had been left without the internet. But then the old man told him about Bill's main prank on his beloved wife. The prankster grandpa covered himself with oil and got inside of a toilet in an attempt to startle the grandma at the most unexpected moment. But everything went wrong. Not only he couldn't prank grandma, but he also became trapped in the toilet himself. Since then, the old man Bill started appearing only at night and in the form of a spooky monster known as the Skibidi Toilet. His first victim, of course, was his own wife, but soon the Skibidi Toilet began terrorizing all the other villagers as well. Now, Edward finally understood why his grandma constantly needed tranquilizers. The realization shocked him to the core that the toilet monster was none other than his own grandfather, cursed by his prankster's past. Coming back to his senses after a horrifying tale, Edward asked the gas station attendant if there was any way to save his grandma from the curse. But the attendant simply shrugged in silence. 
On his way back, the boy's mind was preoccupied with thoughts about Aww. the upcoming night. He was quite certain that another encounter with the old man's skibida toilet Aww. was unavoidable. But he really had no clue what he should do now. Once Edward arrived home, he dashed straight upstairs. He figured quite quickly that barricading the bathroom door would be so much better than doing nothing at all. He armed himself with a broomstick just in case and began the nerve-wracking wait. Nightfall arrived and Edward grew so weary of waiting that he nearly dozed off. Suddenly, the eerie sounds of a terrifying skibbity toilet song echoed through the house. Startled with fear, Edward sprang to his feet, grabbing his trusty broomstick in hand. The toilet monster relentlessly pounded on the bathroom door, but it remained firmly shut behind the cabinet. Trembling with fear and yet determined, Edward stood his ground, watching intently. Soon the pounding ceased and it fell silent. Edward couldn't help but wonder, had the skibbity toilet finally calmed down? Edward approached the bathroom door and moved the cabinet aside. He was trembling with fear, but still dared to leap inside. Much to his surprise, there was no toilet monster in the bathroom. Instead, there was a gaping hole in the floor where the toilet was starting. Edward came closer pondering whether the skibbity toilet had fallen through, when suddenly, the coolest monster appeared again. Overwhelmed with fear, Edward almost shit his pants. The boy ran for his life as fast as he could. There was no time to think, so he recklessly leaped out of the second-story window. To his astonishment, the skibbity toilet also leaped out of the window, giving chase through the dark village. In the midst of the pursuit, Edward decided to remind the cursed toilet that he was its beloved grandson. But the toilet monster just kept singing its dreadful song. It got clear that talking was quite pointless, so he just kept running. Further along the path, they reached a village pond. Luckily, there was an old boat by the shore. Edward hopped into it and began rowing with all his mind. As the boat drifted away, the boy glanced back at the shore. He saw that the enraged skibbity toilet just froze there. Edward realized that the monster couldn't swim. It brought him some relief, and utterly exhausted, he dozed off and fell asleep right in the boat. The next morning, Edward woke up abruptly as a bold girl dumped a bucket of cold water right on him. He looked around and realized that he was on the other side of the pond. When he glanced at this rude girl, he got so shocked, he instantly recognized her because it was Stacy, the very same girl whose hair he had set on fire in pursuit of viral shorts. Edward felt extremely awkward. He never imagined that his prank would leave the girl completely bald. He lowered his gaze and apologized. Stacy forgave him calmly, assuring him that her hair would grow back very, very soon. To be honest, Edward was taken aback by her forgiven kindness. Moreover, Stacy invited him to visit her grandmother's house. On the way, Edward told Stacy about the cursed Skibbity Toilet and his wicked grandpa. The girl wasn't even surprised by the story, as if she already knew it all. When the duo entered the house, Grandma Vanga immediately addressed Edward, claiming that she had been expecting him for a long time. Edward looked at the old lady in astonishment. She was completely blind. The old woman continued explaining that in order to save his grandpa from the prankster's curse, Edward had to fix all the mistakes he had made and gather forgiveness signatures from all the prank victims on a special, magical sheet of paper. After doing all that, he would need to anoint himself with a special enchanted oil, crawl inside the toilet and extract the cursed grandpa from there. Finally, Edward had a clear plan of how he could rescue his grandpa from the prankster's curse. Without wasting any time, Edward set out to rectify the consequences of the weird pranks. 
He went and repaired a tractor. Wash the cows clean from pain. And then he apologized to the villagers for all the trouble that old Bill had caused them over the years. Next, he took out a pen and the magical sheet, requesting the villagers to sign their forgiveness. They hesitated at first, considering the numerous problems Bill had caused them, but eventually they all agreed. The magical sheet began filling up with the necessary signatures. Edward joyfully looked at the sheet. All the signatures had been collected. He hurried home to save his grandpa from the prankster's curse. Reaching the bathroom, Edward took out the bottle of magical oil and began dousing himself with it. The moment of truth had come. He had to plunge into the abyss of the fall toilet. Somehow overcoming his disgust, Edward gathered all his strength, ran and dived into the toilet. When the boy opened his eyes, he found himself in a very deep body of water. He looked around, trying to figure out what he should do next. When he glanced at the bottom, Edward noticed that his grandpa was lying unconscious there. Edward swam down. Reaching his grandpa, Edward attempted to revive him, but the old man remained motionless with his eyes closed. Edward pondered his next move and remembered the magical sheet with the forgiveness signatures. Retrieving it, the sheet began to glow, transforming into a radiant sphere. The magical sphere flew out of Edward's hands and, through inexplicable magic, brought Grandpa Bill back to life. Overjoyed at the miraculous sight, Edward grabbed his grandpa's hand and swam upwards. He had never swum so fast before. Some unknown force guided them to the surface. Edward and Grandpa Bill emerged from the toilet. When the boy saw the joyful face of his smiling grandpa, he knew that he had successfully saved him. And the prankster's curse was finally defeated. First and foremost, Bill set out to rescue his wife from her dependency on pills. Grandma had finally stopped taking tranquilizers and returned to her normal cell. Edward was so thrilled to see his grandma and grandpa together again. As a token of gratitude for help, the boy brought Stacy a wig from his grandmother's collection. The girl was quite pleased with her new blonde look. Finally, Edward had to rectify this harsh mistake. During a phone call with his stepfather, the boy announced that he wouldn't be returning to the city and that he would stay in the village. It was the best news his stepfather could ever receive. To the delight of the villagers, Edward and Bill repaired the communication tower and opened their own internet cinema. The entire village gathered for movie nights. Edward and Stacy always sat next to each other during the screenings. But that's a whole different story.